What we are witnessing all over the country right now is incredibly sad. In the aftermath of the tragic death of George Floyd, it would have been wonderful to see the entire nation unite behind an effort to make our society less violent, more just and more peaceful. But instead, we have seen a tremendous explosion of violence and lawlessness that doesn't seem likely to end anytime soon. Violent crime rates are surging in major city after major city, and the 4th of July weekend was particularly bad. At least 41 people were hit by gunfire in New York City during the holiday weekend, and this continues a trend that we have seen throughout the first half of 2020. Just check out these numbers. According to figures released by the New York Police Department, for the first six months of this year, there were 176 murders, an increase of 23% on the 143 killed during the same period last year. The number of shooting victims has gone up 51% to 616 this year. In June alone, there were 250 shootings compared to 97 in the same month last year. Month on month, burglaries are up 119% and car thefts up 48%. I don't know which one of those numbers is the worst, because they are all quite horrific. A tremendous amount of money has been shifted away from the NYPD budget, and that certainly isn't going to help matters. For years, the hard work of the NYPD had helped to make New York safer than many of our other major cities, but now that is changing at a pace that is absolutely breathtaking. In fact, one British news source is now referring to the city as Lawless New York. Two bullet-ridden bodies lay sprawled on blood-stained concrete steps. Alongside, relatives of the victims are wailing and collapse to the ground. In another part of the city, a gang of youths use spray paint to disable security cameras before robbing a corner store. Later, video footage captures police officers sitting helplessly in their patrol car as a baying crowd hurls glass bottles at them. This is lawless New York, a city that was once America's glittering crown jewel but which risks descending into mob rule. Of course New York still has a long way to go if it wants to rival Chicago. According to authorities, there are more than 100,000 gang members living in Chicago at this point, and the violence never seems to stop. Sadly, the last couple of days have been particularly bad. Over the 4th of July weekend, at least 67 people were hit by gunfire in the Windy City. At least 67 people were shot, including 13 fatally, over the Independence Day weekend in Chicago, according to authorities. Nine of the weekend's victims were minors, and two children died, officials told Fox 32. That includes 14-year-old boy who was among four people who were killed in the Southside neighborhood Englewood on Saturday evening. But instead of blaming the criminals, the Chicago Sun-Times seemed to think that cutting funding for police could lead to a better and safer Chicago. Seriously. Do people actually believe such nonsense? Philadelphia is another major city that is seeing a massive increase in violent crime at the same time funding for the police is being cut back. Shootings are up 67%. Victims of armed violence are up 29%. Homicides are up 25%. So of course it makes sense to defund the Philadelphia PD by $19 million. Most Americans desperately want their neighborhoods to feel safe, and this could be the one issue that could rescue the Republicans from a potential disaster in the November election. Right now, most Democrats are extremely hesitant to speak out against the violent protests that we have been witnessing all over the nation, and that is a huge mistake. And we definitely witnessed more alarming violence during the political protests that were held over the past few days. For example, protesters in Portland were launching projectiles and shooting fireworks at police officers in Portland for hours. If Democrats want to win over independent voters, they cannot be seen as siding with such violence. By engaging in such utter lawlessness, these radical protesters are actually hurting their own cause, because it is only going to help President Trump. The more violence that we see, the more the American people are going to want it to stop. If tens of millions of voters believe that Joe Biden's America is an America filled with rioting, looting and violence, that could potentially be enough to push Trump over the top in November. So Joe Biden's unwillingness to strongly call for law and order may turn out to be his Achilles heel. The way national elections are won in America is by winning over the millions of confused people in the middle, and right now the images of these protests that those confused people are viewing on their television screens are definitely not helping Democrats. For example, over the weekend protesters in New York were burning American flags as they chanted, America was never great. 
Far-left protesters have burned American flags outside Trump Tower and the White House. Video shows the stars and stripes being burned just outside the White House as the demonstrators chanted, America was never great. Does anyone out there actually think that such stunts will make the confused people in the middle more likely to vote for Democrats? Right now, Trump is way behind in the polls, but if he makes these protesters the central issue of the campaign over the next several months he may still have a chance of winning. But no matter who wins in November, it appears that we have now entered a new era of violence and rioting in this country. Many of our major cities already resemble war zones, and what we have experienced so far is just the beginning. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.